Business' Big Podcast. It's Build a Big Podcast. David Hooper with you. This is the podcast about growing your podcast, spreading a message, making money with your podcast, making people care about your podcast. If you want to do those things, you are in the right place. I've got a newsletter. It's called Big Podcast Insider. Every Friday morning is when it goes out. This is the audio edition of that newsletter. You will find it at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Go there if you want to sign up or follow along. Here's what's in this episode. Spreading your podcast. What would Mother Nature do? DIY podcast touring. A great way to build an audience. Feign ignorance and other interviewing tips from NPR. How to decide what to cut or not in an interview. Podcast bait and switch. Also some classified ads for you. Things that I think will help you to build your podcast, spread your message, and do the things that I talk about here on this podcast. This episode is brought to you by Riverside.fm, the leading platform to record studio quality remote podcast and video. How great a remote podcast. Amazing, right? Incredible. You can go anywhere in the world. You can sound like you're in the same room. And if you want a tool to help you do that, Riverside.fm, that's a good one. 70,000 people and companies use it. Companies like Spotify, the New York Times, it records locally on each participant's computer. You are going to sound like you were in the same room regardless of where your guest is. That's because Riverside records locally on each participant's computer, then uploads it to the cloud. That way you get the highest quality audio and video. Are you doing video? Riverside's got you covered. If you're looking to make those long form video clips into short form video clips, something for social media, Riverside's got a long form content editor and AI magic to help you do just that. It's easy. You can try it for free. The URL is riverside.fm. They're going to give you a couple of hours. Take a look, take a listen, see what you think about it. If you want to stick around, I've got a discount code. That URL again, riverside.fm, that's the first step. And the discount code, Big Podcast, B-I-G-P-O-D-C-A-S-T, that'll get you 15% off now and forever. Riverside.fm, the discount code, Big Podcast, B-I-G-P-O-D-C-A-S-T. As I mentioned, this is the audio edition of the newsletter that I send out, Big Podcast Insider. That's what it's called. You can find it at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. All of the links to the things that I'm talking about also at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Don't write it down. Believe me, you're going to hear it a lot throughout this issue. I'm going to go from thing to thing to thing. And because they're all about podcasting, you want a demarcation point. I've got it. It's this sound. (laughs) When you hear that, it is time to turn the page and go on to the next one. Here we go. (laughs) Spreading your podcast. What would Mother Nature do? My wife and I went for a hike in a forest last week, an arboretum. I hadn't heard that word until a few years ago. More or less, there are a lot of different types of trees there. That is done with purpose. What that purpose is, I don't know. But it's a very nice experience walking through an arboretum. You see a lot of trees. They're often labeled, sometimes a little bitty plaque. It's going to tell you something about the tree. One of the things that I noticed is how trees spread. Trees are very clever as far as being able to replicate. They use what's available to them, such as animals in the forest or just general nature to do that job, sometimes without those things even knowing it. Here's a funny example. (laughs) I think it's funny. (laughs) This is the 12-year-old in me. (laughs) Badgers help spread the seeds of yew trees with their poop. They swallow the yew berries, but they only digest the fruit pulp. That leaves the seeds to pass through their digestive system intact. They poop it out. It turns into new trees. The seed, the fertilizer, it's right there. Genius, right? Very clever. There's a lesson for podcasters here. If you want somebody to spread your message, spread what you do, you've got to make it beneficial for them to do so. You've got to make it easy on them. Maybe if you're clever like these trees, make it where it doesn't seem like work. I'm going to talk a little bit about this in this next article, but I'm also looking for ways that you and people like you are using people to spread the word about your podcast. I would love to include your story, talk more about you. I'm on all the social media networks, Pebble, Blue Sky, Mastodon, all of them. Let me know what you are doing. You can find the links to reach out to me. And if you're wondering, what, what is Pebble? Blue Sky, is that a thing? Yeah, it's a thing. Mastodon, I got all the links. They're at (laughs) newsletter.bigpodcast.com. DIY podcast touring. This is a great way to build an audience. This 
is a great way to have people spread your message. One of the best things that you can do to build a dedicated audience is to get in front of people with what you do. And the best way that you can get in front of people is to literally get in front of people, do an in-person event. One of the cool things about in-person events, and this is what I talk about, about being tricky. If you can get one person that's interested in coming, that person is gonna tell a friend or two. People generally do not go to these events alone. So let's say I'm a fan of your podcast. You're doing an in-person event here where I am in Nashville, Tennessee. Maybe I'll bring my wife, maybe I'll bring a friend. Who knows, but I'm gonna bring somebody. I'm probably not going to show up alone. Most people are like this. How do you do this? I've got a tour diary linked at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Also the behind the scenes story of how The Wind, that's the name of the podcast, how they toured the US, Canada, and the UK. You wanna know what these events look like? What kind of presentation is involved? I got that too. I've got a video linked. It's at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. That's the thing I think people find scary about this. Well, you know, I'd like to do a live event, but what would I do on stage? I got a video for you. It's a one-man show. If you've got more than one person, if you're doing an interview-style podcast, or if you've got a panel or a co-host, it's going to be even easier for you. One of the reasons I think that this is so effective is because so few people do it. Any live event, especially a string of them, and this story that I've got linked, the US, Canada, UK, you got to get there for one. United States, big country. Canada, even bigger. UK, pretty far away. You got to put these together, man. You got to get yourself there, but you got to book the thing. You got to organize it. You got to promote it to get other people there. But if you can pull it off, you can with the right work, you will get back more than what you put in. Nothing develops relationships and brings people together like a live event. I've already mentioned this, but it's worth saying again, nobody goes to a live event alone. And if you set up your live event where there is an experience where everybody is focused on you, whether it's a panel, a one-man show, a live rendition of your podcast, everybody's having the same experience, a different version of the same experience, but they're having that same experience. They're having it at the same time. They're having it together with each other. That's a great way to build camaraderie between the listeners that you've got. You probably experienced this if you've gone to a church service. I did an interview last week with Dolly Parton. We were talking about what makes a good song. And she said, well, it's got to have a hook. It's got to have a chorus you can sing along to. People sing back to you. She explained it like that. And the first thing I thought about was church. Everybody's singing the same thing, hymns. You're going to see this at rock shows. You're going to see this at musicals. You're going to see this at hip-hop shows. Hey, ho, hey. <laughs> Naughty by nature knows that. How did they blow up? Yeah, man. They had call and response songs. You can do that at a live event. You might be familiar with Rocky Horror Picture Show. It's not a one-sided thing. The reason that movie is so big isn't because the movie is so good. It's because the audience gets involved and that's your opportunity with live podcast touring. I've got all this linked. It's at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Very quickly, I mentioned the Dolly Parton interview. The next episode of this podcast, I'm taking you behind the scenes on that, the before, the during, and the after. You're going to hear the raw tape. When I connected to Dolly, you're going to hear me talking to her engineer, getting connected. You're going to hear me talking to my producer before and after that interview. How it went down, if you're interested in that, bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. That is the next episode. So subscribe now to make sure that you don't miss it. Bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. Also related, speaking of live events, if you're looking for a live event about podcasting, Pod Indie, that is coming up November 4th in Indianapolis. And a couple of weeks before that, Afros and Audio, this is October 21st and 22nd in Baltimore, Maryland. If you're interested in either one of those, I've got more information online, newsletter.bigpodcast.com. <laughs> Feign ignorance and other interviewing tips from NPR. I had a conversation with a friend of mine, a friend at NPR. This was a few weeks ago. And while it sounds obvious, this is something that I had not really thought about until I asked her a question about a documentary style project I was working on. Most of the interviews that I do, it's the same type of person. I mentioned Dolly Parton. These people are used to doing interviews. Dolly probably did 20 interviews the day that I talked to her. I interview musicians all the time, some of them with decades of media experience. 
They do this all the time. When I interview these people, I pretty much know what I'm getting into. You may not be so lucky. Working on this documentary style project, which was not about music, it was not about marketing, something different from what I normally do. I was completely thrown off when I set up these interviews. And these are people that were, let's say they were on the edge of society. And what I mean by that, nobody doing anything criminal, not like that, but people that, I mean, one guy was in a shelter. He had had a home. He was displaced. He's trying to get his life back together. Another guy, the opposite of that. He had been homeless, but he had a place, but it wasn't so entrenched. It wasn't set in stone where he knew it was going to be there week to week, even day to day. I knew them. They knew me. I didn't think it was going to be an issue. Yeah, man, I'll come to you. I'll bring the kit. We'll put a microphone in front of you. Let you roll. I'm going to make you sound great. They knew me. They trusted me. Or so I thought. But something happened, man. I don't know what it is. It would be the kind of thing like, oh, man, I got to go do this thing first. And yeah, really, I'm into it. They couldn't say no to me. I don't know what it was. Oh, man, I got to go do this thing first. And it was just one excuse after another. One guy wanted money for the interview and I don't pay for interviews. I did think about it. Honestly, I was like, well, you know, I mean, this guy's doing manual labor just trying to survive. I'm taking a couple of hours out of maybe a work day. So, you know, maybe I'll throw him a couple of bones. It didn't work regardless. I mean, it was just like one thing after another. And talking to my friend from NPR, she said, yeah, that's, uh, that's fairly common. She works with a lot of these same kind of guys, meaning on the edge. And I'm not making a judgment about that, but just people that maybe nobody's ever listened to them. You know, maybe they just think, well, what's the point? And that's my thought. That's my like, hey, why would somebody not want to talk to me? And that might be one of the reasons. Maybe they were nervous. Who knows? You just run into all sorts of people when you are podcasting. And this is the point. This is the point of this article. Feigning ignorance and other interviewing tips from NPR. When you're going from one type of person to another type of person to another type of person, if you're doing short NPR style pieces, because most of them are short, if you get four minutes on NPR, it's like, ooh, man, that's forever. (laughs) You're going to come in contact with a lot of different people. What do you do? What do you do to get the interview, set up the interview, make people comfortable during the interview? That's what this article is about. I think you're going to find it helpful. I found it helpful even for the musicians, the media trained people that I'm interviewing, because certainly you want comfort there. You want the best possible tape that you can get. I started in radio long before I got into podcasting. With that said, I would never have considered myself a radio person. When I'm in the radio studio, I really feel like I'm more of a podcaster. When I started my radio stint now, 2005, I started podcasting alongside that. And I was coming in kind of as an outsider. I'd worked at a couple of stations previously, but you know, it was like a music jock or something. I'd done a few documentaries. But, um, you know, I'm a a podcaster first. I'm used to doing my own thing. And I think that was more of just where I came from in the music industry, putting out our own records, selling our own records, getting other people on board after we had done something, not going to them for permission. The point being is NPR, they do things differently than podcasters. And we can learn a lot from NPR. We're in our own world. I remember the first time I went to New Media Expo. And this is after podcasting for, 10 years, a little more. And I didn't know some of this stuff because I was looking at it like radio. So anyway, sometimes we get in silos. The way you were doing podcasting, the way you were doing radio, there are things that we can learn from these other people. This is a great article. It's about feigning ignorance and other interviewing tips, how NPR does things. If you want it, it's at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. <laughs> how to decide what to cut or not in an interview. Speaking of NPR, Again, four minutes, that's a long time on NPR. You might have 90 seconds. Yeah, you better start cutting. We don't have that in podcasting. You can go on and on and on. Get you a Tim Ferriss style interview, four hours. We see that a lot in podcasting. But radio, no, you got to get good at what to cut. I had an interview with a guy this week. He owns a vinyl record pressing plant. Stamping out records. Yes, they still exist. You're under 30. Look it up. Google it. You got about 20 to 24 minutes of space per side on a 33 and a third RPM record. You can squeeze a bit more per side, but these grooves are physically cut into the vinyl. And if you put too much on one side, 
you are compressing the grooves, getting more grooves per inch of that record. So you don't get high quality sound. You don't have the highs and the lows and the dynamics that people like and buy records for. 20 to 24 minutes per side. That's optimal on a vinyl record. Now you're probably not going to put your podcast on a vinyl record. But thinking like this might be helpful to you because limitations force you to make choices about what goes in and what's left out, what's left on the cutting room floor. Are you being this aggressive with your podcast editing? Maybe you should be. Let's take it back to Tim Ferriss. A four-hour interview. He's gotten a little better in recent years, maybe two hours for the interview, but a lot of that could be chopped. I've talked about comics on here. What a great comic is doing, trying to get a laugh every six seconds. Ten laughs per minute. If you've only got five laughs per minute, you're hitting a laugh every 12 seconds, you're considered half as funny. Think about that with your podcast. If I can hit you, hit you, hit you, hit you, hit you with something important, something that makes you think, feel, get angry, get sad, have some kind of emotion, do something, take action. If I can hit you, hit you, hit you, hit you, hit you with that stuff, and pause very quickly and hit, 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 hit again, you're going to think, damn, that's a good podcast. That's something that's making me feel things. That's something that's getting me to take action. You're going to be considered a better podcast than the guy who just rambles. Well, I don't know what you're not talking about today. Or the co-host that try to catch up. Hey, how you been doing? Well, I've been good. Hadn't seen you since the last episode. What have you been up to? It's fine for you to have that. Build a rapport with your co-host, but chop it. It's not adding to your show. I've got more thoughts linked at newsletter.bigpodcast.com, including opinions on what you should never cut and the ethics of rearranging content. If you're curious, newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Related, and I've got this link too, I've got a song. It was cut from the best-selling music album of all time. I'm talking Michael Jackson Thriller. There was a song on there, and they chopped it. Quincy Jones said, nope. That's not going to work for this album. And it's a great song. It's by Michael Sambello. Remember Maniac, Maniac, Maniac. It's not that song. It's another song he wrote. The mechanical royalties alone would have been over $6 million. That's a nice payday. And Quincy Jones chopped it. You want to know what it is? You want to hear it? I've got it linked. (laughs) Newsletter.bigpodcast.com. A podcast bait and switch. There are two common bait and switch approaches in podcasting. One of them, fake podcast. The second, fake guests. Fake podcasts work in a couple of ways. One is to get guests in for an interview. I'm going to put that in quotes. And try to sell them on something other than the podcast. The other is to sell potential guests ahead of time on the podcast itself. You might have had this happen. Somebody reaches out to you. And they say, oh, man, I would love to interview you. But they're not really interviewing you. They just want to get you on the phone, give you a sales call, give you a sales pitch. That's what I'm talking about. Or maybe you're a book author. Sometimes these fake podcasts that sell the podcasting opportunity, they say, well, I'd love to interview about your book, but it's going to cost you. 50 bucks, 100 bucks. I mean, some of them are pretty cheap, but it doesn't mean that it's worth it. I've met a few hosts, maybe more than a few over the years, who charge people for interviews. And they're not bad people. They're not evil. But one guy told me, he said, well, everybody else is making money, so should I. His podcast isn't very successful. (laughs) Maybe that's why he's not making money. I want to take this thing back to the thing I talked about earlier about interviewing people, and some of them want money. Some people are just thinking today. They're living day to day, hour to hour, minute by minute. They are in that kind of situation. And podcast hosts, no different. They're thinking, man, I need food on the table, pay the rent, get braces for the kids. I don't know. But they need money for something. Just because you show up and just because you can do something doesn't mean that somebody's going to pay for it. Not then, not right away. Maybe you can develop something where it's worthwhile Maybe as far as interviewing people, you want to turn that into more of a production gig, but that's not podcasting. Yeah, it's fine. Hire a host. I've been hired to do interviews. People call me up. (laughs) You know, people will call us, people like us, hosts, because we can drive an interview. And it's not just podcasting. Maybe it's television. 
Maybe it's for live events. That's fine. That's more production. That's more of a service. You showing up, providing your hosting skills. But if you're trying to charge people to be on your podcast, no, 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 no. No. Don't put money over quality. For one, you're going to be bored to death. The people who are willing to pay for this stuff, usually not that good. The reason that people aren't willing to pay is because people don't need to pay. Those are the guests that you want. Anyway, I've got more thoughts on pay-to-play podcasting, the podcast bait and switch. Also, a funny joke for you. You know, I throw a little bit of humor in these newsletters. The podcast humor section. You can see this joke for yourself. It's visual. It's a newsletter.bigpodcast.com. I'd love to know your experience with bait and switch podcasts. Reach out to me, Pebble, Blue Sky, Mastodon, any social media network. I am there. Let me know. If you're charging people for interviews, you want to defend that, reach out to me. We might be able to work something out. Might do an interview with you. I'd love to hear your perspective. Again, I don't think you're evil. I don't think it's necessarily the best business model, though. If you had the opposite experience, do reach out. All the links, (laughs) newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Classified ads for you. Swell AI automates writing podcast summaries, articles, social posts, and more. You can manage multiple shows on one dashboard, build custom templates for each show. Also automate the process even more by connecting your account to Google Drive, Dropbox, and Zoom. As soon as you're done with your podcast, Swell AI takes it, gives you automated episode notes and more. You can get started for free. I've got the link. It's at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Bull Tool, powerful and easy to use graphic multi-tool that lets you easily remove backgrounds, upscale image quality, add filters and animation effects to images and much more. This thing is great. I had a guest send me a photo and you know, it's kind of blurry, it's old or you find a guest photo and it's small. Throw that thing up on Bull Tool. Give you a high def, any size you want photo. Uses AI, it's super cool. You can try this for free as well. You want to move background, add a filter, add animation? Yeah, it does that. It's going to get you some good social media stuff, graphics for your podcast. Everything is linked at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Hey, you want to work with me personally? I've got an option for you. It's called Big Podcast Amp. That stands for Audio Monetization Program. I'll get you in with some other serious podcasters that I'm working with. And together, we're going to grow your podcast, make people care about it, get more attention for what you were doing. Right now, I'm still doing the soft launch. It's cheap, man, about 50 bucks a month. And this is how to get it. Bigpodcast.com slash AMP, A-M-P. Go there. If you got any questions, do reach out to me. I'm happy to answer them. Big Podcast AMP, audio monetization program. It's a bigpodcast.com slash AMP. Thanks for listening to Build a Big Podcast. As I mentioned earlier, the next episode, the before, the during, the after of how I did this interview with Dolly Parton, it's me working with my producer, me working with her engineer, me working with Dolly, and then immediate thoughts on what happened afterwards with my producer, also how this thing's set up, a lot of behind the scenes stuff. So if you're interested in doing these celebrity interviews, press junket style interviews, getting bigger, more established guests for your podcast, I'm going to talk all about it. This is the kind of stuff that we work on in Big Podcast Amp audio monetization program. But this one, this one's on me, man. So subscribe now, make sure you don't miss it. Bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. That will make sure you don't miss this episode with Dolly or any other episodes that I do. It's very easy. You go to bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. I've got three links for you, three buttons. One for Android, one for iPhone, one is an RSS feed. If you want to scan a QR code, I've got that too. I make it very easy for you to subscribe. One click is all it takes. Bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. Go there now before you forget. I'll get this next episode out to you. Bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. Thanks for listening. I'll see you on the next episode of Build a Big Podcast.